Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I greet you all on this beautiful Christmas morning, and I wish you and to all of your families the blessings of this holy and joyous Christmas season. As we come now and we enter the Lord's presence, we acknowledge our sins and the times we have not found Jesus Christ as the center of our lives 
and the gift of the Father. For our sins, we turn now to the Lord and we ask for mercy and for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ 
who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing the peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refluence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be so for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you 
who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. It is my great joy as the Bishop of the Diocese of Winona to wish all of you who are listening to this broadcast today a very blessed and holy season of Christmas. Know that I realize many of you are homebound and it's not possible for you to come to Mass. And I know you yearn and wish you could. So we come to you. And as your Bishop, I treasure your faith I give thanks for the liveliness of your faith, which results in prayers for the church, and especially I know you pray for your priests and you pray for me. I thank you. And those of you who are visiting, and perhaps today, because of various circumstances, or taking care of someone who's ill, are joining us also. We wish all of you the blessings of this holy season. Several years ago, I happened on Christmas morning to be with a family and their grandchildren had come over and were opening their gifts. There's nothing quite like seeing Christmas morning through the eyes of a child. And sure enough, the joy of these gifts all wrapped and especially there under grandma and grandpa's tree and sure enough, as they take the wrappings off, you see the joy and excitement of the gifts that they had been hoping for. But there was one gift, especially, that their granddaughter had been waiting for. And it was a doll that was almost as tall as she is, the little girl at about five years of age. When she opened it up, the joy just flowed from her eyes and the smile and caressing that doll. But as you know, once the gifts are all opened and then other things begin to occur, as there's breakfast, there's things to do, I couldn't help but keep my eye on that doll because it was now sitting in a chair in the living room. But I noticed the little girl was playing with the big box that it came with. And she was inside of it and making herself a little home. I realized, and I saw it again through the eyes of the child, how not only for children, but for all of us as adults, we can see the outside of a gift. We can see how it gets wrapped, and we forget the real gift and the gift inside. And we sometimes take greater enjoyment in the gift wrapping than the gift itself. Today on Christmas morning, our Savior greets us as a baby. He is born of the Virgin Mary. He is the gift of the Father. He is truly God and he is truly man. He enters this world especially a world that at his time was also broken, where there were wars and conflicts. And when you see how Jesus Christ enters this world, you have a deep appreciation for Mary and for Joseph. No place for them in the inn, traveling to Bethlehem, away from family and friends, the first Christmas, the gift of the Father, but not an easy journey and not an easy time for the Holy Family. As we celebrate the joy of Christmas, let's keep our eye on the gift because it comes wrapped and it's beautiful. 
the trees, the lights, the poinsettias, all of the greens and garlands remind us of the glory of God. But the real gift comes wrapped in swaddling clothes, comes to us today as a baby, born of humble and poor parents, born in a place where cattle are kept, yet born for us and for our salvation. I encourage all of us today, spend some time amidst the gifts that people give us, the enjoyment of opening them, to remember the most important gift, Jesus Christ, the gift that never is put aside, but is the source of our hope, who is for us the light of the world. And throughout this year, keep opening that gift, which is your relationship and my relationship with Jesus Christ. And when the world seems topsy-turvy, when we see things that hurt us and we see others who are also being hurt by things that take place, we know that Jesus Christ has entered this world. He is our hope. He is our salvation. All other kingdoms will one day fall. All rulers will come and go. And the circumstances of this world will one day give way to his kingdom. Jesus Christ is the gift of Christmas. Keep opening him, not just the wrappings, but the gift of our Savior, who opens his life for you and me to lift us up Merry Christmas. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For bishops, priests, and deacons, May their proclamation of the birth of our Savior, Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, move many to place their faith in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For legislative bodies, that they might take seriously their duty to protect their most valuable vulnerable citizens, especially the elderly and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For expectant mothers, that they might receive the care 
and support they need for a safe delivery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and people who are homeless, that they might find room in the inn for temporary shelter and resources and help for a permanent home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they might one day rejoice with the Lord forever in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you have given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, to raise up a fallen world and to restore humanity to a new and eternal dignity. As you have poured out your Holy Spirit and brought about new life in the womb of the Virgin Mary through the Incarnation, so too help us through the power of the Spirit to live faith-filled lives and to see Jesus Christ as the eternal gift in whom is our hope and is our security and our foundation. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels, the archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, on the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Francis, our Pope, for me, your unworthy servant, for the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's share with one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. This is Bishop John Quinn wishing you a Merry Christmas from the Diocese of Winona. This Christmas season, I pray that you will recognize the gift of Jesus in your life. Our Savior entered this world with nothing and spent his life serving those who did not have much. Let us imitate him through our service to the least of these. Amen.